Rush is an incredible application for video production. It can be used by any teacher and any student because it's not a really high-end professional tool like Premiere Pro, but also it's not quite as basic as Spark Video. It's kind of in the middle there. Let me show you why. I've opened up a Premiere Rush project now. Well, I've opened up Premiere Rush and you can see it says create a new project. When you click on that button, it's going to give you your hard drive. Basically, you can see all of the different directories that you are familiar with on your machine. And potentially you could go and grab any asset from any part of your hard drive and bring in and use those for your video. But I always recommend when you're starting a video to have a project folder and inside that folder have maybe some subfolders like a footage folder, a stills folder, and an audio folder. All the assets that you're gonna have in your video really should be inside a project folder. Wow. To help with the teaching of Rush, we've created a kind of like a project folder for you, and we've called it Sample Media. And when you click on it, we've got some footage, and we've got an audio file. And this footage is, is from some young people who have gone to the Philippines for a holiday. Now I'm gonna order my footage by, I'm gonna say this one first, this is the water aerial shot, beautiful drone footage to start my story. It's always good to start a story with a wide shot, have like a, an establishing scene for your story. And then I'm gonna click on this one second, this one third, this one fourth, this one fifth, and the soundtrack. So that's the order I want. Doesn't matter if you don't have it in that order, you can always change it up later on. Down the bottom left hand corner you can see the project name and I'm going to call this one my trip. And also down the bottom left hand corner is a little button called sync with creative cloud. If that's ticked it means everything you do you could be doing and keep redoing on your phone or on your tablet device because <laughs> Premiere Rush is an iOS and an Android app as well. It also allows you to sync to the Creative Cloud, so you could open it up in Premiere Pro and have all the full bells and whistles of Premiere Pro within your Rush project, which is pretty cool. So a good workflow would be to, to start on your phone, uh, then keep working on your laptop or your tablet, and then if you really want to complete the project with all the bells and whistles of Premiere Pro, finish it off in Premiere Pro. Wow. Notice there is a new button on Premiere Pro called Open Premiere Rush Project. All right, I'm just uh, ordering that now on the right bottom right hand corner, of course. If I chose not to tick that, if I unticked it, it means it would just be a standalone project on this machine. I wouldn't be able to sync it with other, other, uh, other, soft, other applications and other, other devices. I'm gonna keep it synced though. As I click Create, it's now put, bringing all of that footage into a timeline and you can see my timelines appeared. Now there's nothing really super amazing about that. There's a lot of applications out there, both phone and tablet and laptop desktop applications that will bring footage and audio into a timeline. But this is the first one ever in the history of video editing applications that allows us to have multiple layers of video and multiple layers of audio on an iOS and Android device, as well as a laptop device. It's pretty amazing. To show you that, if I go to the bottom left-hand corner, see that little control tracks button? If I click on that, it reveals your four layers of video. And if I open up the this button here called the expand audio button, you can now see one, two, three, four layers of audio that we can control. Now let's play what we've got so far. If I hit this play button just here, You can hear the soundtrack and you can actually see the drone footage, which looks amazing. I'm thinking I might want to start this story with a title. So I'm going to jump up to the top right hand corner where we can see a set of tools to help us with the editing. The first one's the titles tool, then we've got the transitions tool, the color tool, the speed tool, the audio tool and the crop and rotate tool. I'm going to jump to titles. And this reveals to me a whole range of motion graphic templates. Motion graphic templates are great title effects that have been created with Adobe After Effects, but they allow you as the editor to change the content, change the, the colors, and have quite a bit of control without needing to go to Adobe After Effects or to even know anything about Adobe After Effects to make those changes. I'm gonna choose this title here called Modern Down, 
and I'm going to drag it. I could drag it onto the stage and it'll appear exactly where the playhead is. I'm just going to undo that because another option is to drag it straight onto the timeline and position it exactly where you want it to appear. So as I play this now, I've got my title appearing, but of course I want to change that from the word modern title. Let's double click it to the Philippines. And I'm going to reposition it just by clicking it. I can move it around. The little handles allow me to scale it as well, and I can just position it into the top right hand corner. I'm not that happy with the font or the color of that shape. So I'm going to make some changes to this title. Once I've got it activated, I can go to the right hand side where I've got the edit tools. I can click on and change the text and I can change the shape. If I change the text, first thing I want to do is give it a different style of font and that'll do. And if I want to change the shape, I can open up the shape and I'm thinking instead of purple, I want to have a green that sort of matches the color scheme of this scene. So I'm going to change the purple by grabbing that little droplet tool, click into the trees and now I've got a nice green. So let's play the title so far, take the playhead back to the start. And the title's going on a little bit long. We only need to have a title going for as long as you can read it. So I'm going to trim by going to the edge of that title. I'm going to trim it down so it's a bit shorter. And I'm thinking that's about enough for that opening scene too. I'm really conscious of a rule that we have in video production called the seven second rule. <laughs> Try to keep your images less than seven seconds on the screen before you make a change. It really helps to keep the interest of your audience that way. So I'm going to trim this too. So notice how I'm just dragging the edge of it and trimming it back. The other option is to grab the little cutting tool on the left hand side and split the clip and then delete with your keyboard the part you don't want. So there's various ways of doing the editing. So here we go. Good morning. Now we're into our, our second edit and notice how we're saying something there. Good morning, Philippines. But the music is a little bit loud, isn't it? So I want to bring the music, the soundtrack down so I can hear what he's saying. At the moment, uh, the Premiere Rush is, is using a little bit of artificial intelligence wow. and our artificial intelligence engine in Adobe is called Adobe Sensei. I'm sure you've probably heard of that. It's used in lots of our applications to help you build things. At wow. the moment, Adobe Sensei has interpreted this audio as voice and this audio as music. And that's good. And if it didn't do that, we could always change that. If I jump up to the audio settings and you can see change type from voice to music or other. So at the moment it's doing the right thing, it's telling me it's voice. Now that it's doing that, I can then click into the soundtrack and go back to my audio settings and open up the advanced section and click on this button here called Auto Duck. And when I click that, notice now that Adobe Sensei, the artificial intelligence engine, has reduced the amount of volume on the music so that we can hear the person talking. Let's have a listen now. Good morning, Philippines. Guess what we're going to go do again. I think it's reduced it a little bit too much. So I'm going to go over to where it says reduce by and just drop that quite a bit. So we've got the music a little bit louder. Good morning, Philippines. Guess what we're going to go do again. Snork off. Now I'm thinking we might want to have a transition between this edit and this edit. So I'm going to jump up to my transitions tool, grab the cross dissolve and just drag it between the two edits. And let's see what that looks like. I want to extend the length of my transition. So I'm going to go to the edge of it and just drag the edge of it a little bit. So it's a little bit longer. Now this edit here, there's a lot of background noise and I, want to, I don't want that, it's distracting from the soundtrack. Notice the soundtrack has come back up again because it's realizing that that is not talking, it's actually, uh, it, it interprets it as music, but in fact it's, it's a lot of background noise. So to get rid of the background noise, I'm going to click into that edit, jump up to my audio tools again and just mute them. So now we shouldn't have any background noise, just the music. Now for a special effect here, I'm thinking as her foot's going on the platform, I want to slow things down. I want to use the speed tool. So I'm going to click on the speed tool now. And that little white speck that you can see in the range 
is the point where the playhead is currently located. If I grab that handle and drag it to that point, that's when I want the speed to change as she goes onto the platform. So she's gonna go on slow motion from the platform to the boat. Let's work out where, the boat, where that happens. She gets onto the boat now. So the spec has moved, so I'm gonna grab that handle. So my range, my speed change range is from that point to that point. The actual speed change, I'm gonna bring it down to 50%. And I'm gonna ramp it so that it suddenly, doesn't suddenly dramatically change. It gradually changes to slow and then gradually changes back to normal speed again. So that is my settings. Let's see what it looks like now. Here we go, we've got our slow motion. As soon as she gets onto the boat, back to normal speed again. Now we're on the boat and I'm thinking the background noise is okay. I actually want the background noise, but not quite as loud as it currently is. So I'm in that edit. I'm going to get out of the speed tool and into my audio tool again and just drop the volume a little bit. Let's just play that now. That's probably enough time. Although now what I'm thinking is this edit here, oh God, I love and notice that the, the, um, the soundtrack has dropped automatically because it heard that there was a voice. I, I'm actually thinking I want that edit to appear here while the boat's going. I want it to appear up in the top right-hand corner of this particular edit. So to do that, I'm gonna grab that edit and drag it up to layer two and move it over the top of the boat scene. And because it's the same size, it's overtaking everything because whatever's on the top layer is always dominant. If I double click that and then just drag it a little bit so I'm scaling it smaller with those little handles on the corner, I'm now positioning it to become a picture in picture. Now, of course, I've got one, two, three, four layers, so I could, in, I could have a picture in picture in picture in picture if I wanted to. That's how powerful this is. And keep in mind that everything I'm showing you here, I could have been doing on my phone. That's the power of Premiere Rush. It's an amazing application. So as I play this now, and now we're into the end. I'm thinking uh, another title, maybe a closing credit title, this one here called Modern Credits. I'm gonna grab that, bring that into layer one, and just change it from Company Presents to Tim Presents, and let's see what that looks like. The music's naturally fading out for me, which is fine. Just trim that a little bit, and maybe have a, have a fade out of the title by going to my transitions, grab the cross dissolve, bring that to the end. If the music isn't fading out, there's a little trick to the trade here. What I might suggest we could do is make a cut in the music when it's already naturally fading out while someone's talking. It kind of distracts you from the music at that point. So I'm gonna click the soundtrack, find a point where someone's talking, and then make a cut. Now with that cut, I'm just gonna trim the music a little bit so that I've got the end of the song happening when things are fading out. Now, of course, this soundtrack might be another two minutes in it. So this is a good little technique to find the end of your soundtrack where it naturally changes to the end and bring that to the start by putting in a cut and then making that change. So now that I've got my, my finished product fading out beautifully, I'm going to export it. To do the exporting process, we go to share, and I could share it straight to my YouTube account, Facebook, Instagram, Behance. If you're not sure about Behance, look it up, behance.net. It is, people describe it as the LinkedIn for designers. Think about that, the LinkedIn for designers. If you're a designer, and I recommend anyone from about the age of 15 who's interested in the world of design really should have a Behance portfolio. It's free, it's how you get noticed, uh, it's, it's how top designers are looking for talent around the world. So behance.net is worth looking into. <laughs> Other than that, if you just want to save it as a video file, we'll give it a name. I'll call it My Trip, a location, and maybe I'd have my project folder that I talked about at the start. I'd be pointing to my project folder. In this case, I'm just going to save it straight to the desktop. It's given me an estimated file size. If that file size you know is far too big, then I could go to advanced settings and play with some of the compression 
rates uh, the frame rate or, or play uh, bring the resolution down by standard it looks like it's 720 hd because that's probably what the footage is but notice if i was filming in 4k i could be exporting out to 4k as well incredibly powerful again this could have all been done on your phone and by the way with the phone and and uh, tablet version it comes with a built-in camera which has some professional settings so you could be using that camera as part of your filming and then editing on the fly on your phone and then finishing it off on your laptop if you needed to uh, i'm just going to keep all the settings as is and then click export it's now rendering away now i could go to my desktop or i could just click view in finder and it just brings it up if I open it up, it's now in quick time. Let me open it up in full screen. Good morning, Philippines. Guess what we're gonna go do again? Snork off! Yay! Here's my slow. <laughs> and my closing credits and my fade out well there you go folks that's premiere rush in a bit of a nutshell a bit of a rushed version of premiere rush I, I hope that's been helpful for you and let me encourage you to keep developing your video literacy skills i don't know if you're aware of this but video is now officially considered a literacy do you know that around about 80 percent of all internet content is now via video it is the way that so many people are communicating these days. And as teachers and students, when we're in the game of communicating our curriculum content and communicating our learning, doing it creatively through video is so advantageous, not just in the teaching and learning process, but when those students do go into university or into jobs in the future, if they've developed video editing skills, oh, it's going to be so powerful for them and really beneficial for them in the future. So good luck with your video literacy. Wow.